Hello, in this quick screencast I want to give you a basic summary of everything you need to know for porting your standard knockout application to a JukeScript knockout application. The difference between a standard knockout application and a JukeScript knockout application is that your standard knockout application has its application logic in JavaScript. Via JukeScript you can express that same application logic in Java. On the samples page of knockout the simplest example shows HTML and, of course, application logic in JavaScript. What you can always do is simply copy and paste the HTML and CSS. So the view, you can copy and paste directly into your JukeScript application. So there's an, you will find an index HTML page into which you need to copy and paste the elements that come from your view. That's it. You're done with the view. The point is the view model, the application logic. And we can see that we have two observable properties and a computed property. The JukeScript implementation for Knockout has a property annotation and a computed property annotation. If you are not using Knockout, so if you wanted to port from an Angular-based JavaScript application or an Ember-based or some other JavaScript framework, you would need to have your own bindings, which would provide your own annotations. And you wouldn't have the property annotation, the computer property annotation. You would have something different that would hook into or map to items from your standard knockout-based application. However, with a knockout background and with a knockout application, it makes complete sense. The property annotation is an observable property. The computer property annotation is for your computer properties. So here we have two observable properties, first name and last name, and we have a computer property, which combines first name with last name, exactly as is done here. The difference, of course, is that our observable properties are typed, which would not be the case in JavaScript. And um, the final step is to use the apply bindings, which you do in JavaScript in your view model, and in JukeScript you do it in your main class. You set apply bindings, and also this is where you initialize your model, the first name and the last name, instead of doing it in the apply bindings call in JavaScript. So here's that was a very simple example, um, observable property and computer property. But normally you have a lot more than that, because Knockout also provides an array of observable properties. You can see here, observable array. And in addition to computed properties and observable properties, you also have functions. So now the question is how to express these within JukeScript. So the starting point, of course, is to simply copy the HTML and paste it um, into our own HTML page. You can see that we have a function add item, and we have a observable property item to add, and we have an observable array items. How to express that in JukeScript? So item to add is the one um, observable property name. The other is items. This should be an array. So we have here an attribute in our annotation array. Also, a nice thing, of course, is we have code completion and all of the rich editor features that, that Java editors provide and the JavaScript editors struggle with because of the loosely typed, weakly typed nature of JavaScript. So instead of our computed property, what we want here is to have a function. So a function. Again, this is an annotation which is relevant to your knockout-based application. If you had some other kind of um, application that you were working on for a different framework, Angular, whatever else, you would have a different set of annotations that you would have created for that. Um, we have the function is called add item, and a function in a knockout implementation of JavaScript always gives you access to the model. And once you have the model from the model, you can get hold of um, your properties. So here's our first property, and here is our second property. And now, what can we do with these properties? Or what should we do with these properties depends on our application logic. So we check whether it's not empty, and then we add the item to the items, and then we make the item to add empty so that after the add is pressed, the um, input field is emptied. So let's do the same thing here, but this time in Java. 
So we'll first say if item to add um, is not null and item to add, for example, a length is greater than zero, then what we want to have happen is that items um, add, item to add, and the next thing we want to have happen is that we want the item to add to be set to empty. And that, then we are done. Um, the only piece left to do is to initialize. So let's say um, set item to add to Joe and get the items and we'll add all arrays as list. And here we have some alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, we will initialize in exactly the same way. And then we can run the application. Run the application. It starts up and we can add our item to the list and then the input field is emptied. It works exactly as it did in the original knockout application with the difference that now we can distribute this also to, to Android and to iOS and um, just not only to the browser and also to a desktop application as is the case right here. The important points were that um, we have the property annotation, we have the computer property annotation, we can use the true on, on the array attributes to make this an observable array. And if you have functions in Knockout that you need to port, you use the function annotation. And JukeScript takes care of the rest.